There is a promise and there's a fulfillment. In between here is called the value of sin, which is what called character development. So the first journey, they put metals on his feet. May God arrest you to your next level. Yeah. <laughs> you don't understand me. May you be arrested to your next level. Yeah. If you want to change the food of a, an animal, a dog, what do you do? You stab them. When you stab them, they will change appetite because eating what you don't like is better than dying of starvation. And sometimes when God wants to take you to your next level, he makes you hungry. He puts some trouble on you. He puts some things around you. Why? It is to prepare you for where you are going. Everything you go through. Oh, God. Now, don't, don't, wait, wait, wait. I didn't, I didn't get it, but let me give you. If it is not good, the journey is not over. What did I say? Why is it in the Bible? Romans 8, 20, all things work together for good. So when it is not good, when you cannot see this thing as good, you are still on your way. You've not arrived. And we know that all things work together for good. Look at your life right now. Is it good? Oh, my life, you have been so, so good. When you were saying, you said, God, this one, they are beg. I'm saying you are good, but this is your good, dear. If it's not good, then it's not over. It's a process. You are transition. At the end of the day, when you look back, you say, God, it was you all along. It was you all along. Let me tell you this. You are not the only child of God, though, that he loves. So. He loved Jesus so much that he asked him to die. So you, there's nothing will not let you go through to get to where you have to go to. I repeat it. If he loved Jesus and so he allowed him to die, you, there's nothing will not allow you to go through to get to where you have to go to. Until the time came to fulfill his dreams, the Lord tested Joseph's what? Character. Until the time of his when let me tell you this. If if your time is not coming, and I made them embrace swing, and the Biana will be brass from it, I mean brain swing. You are not developing the character to hold you to where God is taking you. And God will not give you anything without the character to handle it. How can you work with the Judas for three and a half years? And still give him your finances to keep. You are called. How many of you know that? It takes some level of character to give all your money to Judas to keep. You know very well he's a thief, and yet he's the one handling your money. It takes character. It takes character. And that is the person who will betray you, who will send you to your next level. So if you sack him, Jesus, you will not die. And that means your, your assignment is not complete. So you must keep him. There are some of the people if you pray, God, take this person out of my life. God said, for what? God, if you take this person out of my life, I'll give you praise. God said, they will be there to torment you, to you learn to tolerate people like that. Because interestingly, the man you are going to marry is worse than the person you don't can't tolerate. So if you can't handle this person, then stop telling me, God, give me somebody from your heart. Tell me to give me somebody from your heart. Until the time came for his dreams, for the word that God gave me to come to pass, God tested his word. God tested his word. God tested his Look at this, a character. So many people say things like, let me get down. I am waiting upon the Lord. I don't know if I've heard that scripture before. They that wait upon the Lord shall be. Why are things not happening? I'm waiting upon the Lord. Yesterday I was doing a study, and God said, Francis, check it. Most people say they are waiting upon the Lord, they are doing nothing. What does it mean to wait for God? And what does it mean to wait upon the Lord? I had to check dictionary and check Greek and Hebrew to fathom this. Pardon my English. To fathom is to understand, is to comprehend. 
Isaiah chapter 4, verse 31. Let's read it. He said, But they that wait upon, they that wait upon the Lord shall what? Their strength. They shall mount that wings again. So people say, I'm waiting on God. Make two. So a courier. They say, no, I'm waiting on God. So when God comes, now let's look at the word waiting on upon God. What does it mean? The, this is from the dictionary. To wait upon someone or something is to serve or to attend to a customer or a patron. To wait upon is to serve. So they that wait upon the Lord is why you are waiting for God to do something for you. You are doing something for him. I'm waiting to become the bank manager. Serve the management. But to us, they that wait upon the Lord. I'm on the fasting time. Can you do this when I'm waiting upon God? If God doesn't tell me to move, I'm not moving. You will be there the rest of your life. You are not going to mount up. Because if you serve anybody, you will pick up the character that is with the person. You see, by the time, you see, God was so smart. He made Potiphar by Joseph. Why? Potiphar was the direct chief of staff of the king. And so before the king will even recommend you, the chief of staff is the one that you'll be under. And so all the time he was in Potiphar's house, he was building character, able to serve kings. Because when he was with his father, he doesn't know how to sweep. He was only given a coat of many colors. Your coat of many colors will take you to the palace. But your nonsense will take you away from the palace. We are one fed over power here, but we will find the people. Take the CV, you get a job. By your laziness, one week they will sack you. They will sack you. And you say, My time now is soon. You. If my time comes, if my time comes, all these people they will serve me. They will never serve you. Check it. Waiting upon. So to wait is like an example is I took it from the dictionary. Every member of staff shall be needed to wait upon the royal family during the feast. To wait upon the simple. Okay. We are in church. Why are you here? Daddy has not left until he leaves. I can't go. That means you are waiting upon me. You are waiting for instruction on what I will tell you. So what you are doing now is what I've told you to do. Until I tell you what to do next, you are doing what you are told to do. So most often, people are doing nothing. What they are doing is that they think that I'm waiting on God. Now, let me tell you this. Can I say something? Boaz wanted to marry. But Boaz, none are knowing you. Boaz, Boaz. Boaz, none are knowing you. That's why at that age, he was still single. Number two, he was also waiting to marry somebody that will give birth to the Messiah. So Naomi was smart and told the lady, go to the man and go and lie at her feet. If it is you, they say, go and lie at their feet. You go and lie at the back. <laughs> Watch your current. So the man was sleeping in the cold in the night. There was no covering. So the woman went and held her feet, slept there, and the man was asleep and found that I what do I affect you when I am your hands and your feet? How many of you know that thing? If you are feeling cold. So she realized actually, I'm feeling some warmth, baby. He feels some warmth, baby. He lifted her the cloth and said, Hey, lady, what are you doing here? So Madame said, I should come and lie by your feet. He said, Ah, who is your madam? Naomi. No, that woman was my hell. But because she's too old, she said, Ah, oh, okay. Okay. Then the, um, the, um, the, um, the boss said, you know something? If the people find out that you have slept here overnight, they will kill you. So you know what? Let's wait in between morning and dawn. 
I will escort you. But even with the escort, I will go 50%. Then you till you go. I will watch till you are vanished. Then I will come back and lie down. You see, Master, this week is single and married. Don't go deep. You see, Henry and this thing, they are going to get married. If, if I tell you the lines between lines, have you seen proposal that is recorded on video before? When Henry was proposed, it was on video. We have it. We'll show it to you on the web. Everything was fair. I told the lady, don't accept it now. Cool down. Stretch him. Stretch him. Then one day I said, I said, do you like the guy? She said, yes. Are you sure? Yes. Then, okay, now you can go. I said, then she told me, hey, you don't know this. She told me, so what do I tell him now? He proposed long ago. What do I tell him now? If you are going to say, I've accepted, if you look at me, I said, don't tell him that. Just tell him that, so when will you get married? So she asked the guy, when do you get married? He said, I'm waiting for you. But he said, you said nothing. Would you want to marry me? It came back. Listen, you need wisdom. One when young son of the person, Ube kisi kisi ni mama na das. I am one. Miss Ube kisi kisi ni wada sa I am one. On the one, it was a monster. Oh, amen. So they don't wait. On the Lord. Now let's look at another one. Waiting on. Am I teaching you something here? Uh, are you sure? Okay, let's go on. John chapter 5, verse 3. <coughs> what is John chapter 5, verse 3? It said, in this lay a great multitude of impotent full of blind hearts with that waiting for. So this one is not waiting upon. They are waiting for. So now, are you waiting upon the Lord or you are waiting for God? It's two different things. Now, let's look at Lamentations 3.25. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. He is good unto them that wait for him. To the soul that seeketh him. Psalm 27 verse 14. Wait on the Lord. That is, that is different from wait for the Lord. So if you say, I'm waiting for you, it means that your next action will determine my reaction. Oh, check your dictionary. Where your dictionary? Bro. To wait for someone or something is to be in a state of expectation or anticipation for someone or something to arrive, for something to happen. I know what we are saying. I'm waiting upon the Lord. No. Waiting upon the Lord is not the same as waiting for the Lord. Look at the who are you waiting for? What did the person say? So Psalm 13, David said, How long, O Lord? When will you answer my cry? Why must I wait so long? For your promise to be fulfilled. And so, a person did him. You want to be king? Do you know how to be king? It's one thing to be anointed to be. It's one thing to develop their character to be. And both must synchronize for it to give you a perfect ministry. That's why the Lord told me that, Francis, many want the spirit. But the knowledge also gives the spirit. Because you can get the spirit without the knowledge, and the spirit will kill you. People don't know this. Anointing kills people. When I teach about it, the anointing can the anointing can make you behave like a madman or a mad woman if you don't have knowledge. I don't want to mention it. You see, the person went to take microphone from somebody's hand. 
is anointing without knowledge. And Kwasi Asem is anointing without knowledge. When David messed up with the king, wait, sorry, Uriah, look at Nathan. Look at how Nathan approached the thing. Nathan was matured, had developed the character to develop it. Samuel was going to anoint David. He knew that if the king had it, he would kill him. So he went to God and said, God, if I go and saw he has gone to anoint a king, I'll be dead. He said, tell him you are going to offer sacrifice. It was God like, no. When he went there, he offered sacrifice, and then he anointed the king. He didn't go to do sacrifice, but he added sacrifice and did the king, so he didn't lie. Why? You need, if when God gives you something to say, you need wisdom on how to articulate it. Mm. Mm. Uh, am I teaching here? I said the anointing can make you go mad. One day I'll teach you about it. Because the spiritual realm is different from this physical realm. But the physical, the spiritual realm can never work until it has taken note of the physical realm. That is why Jesus could not just come and arrive on He needed permission because the only access route to this earth is a woman who has a womb. So God had to submit to Mary. Nobody can have access to this earth without a physical realm. That's why no demon can affect you except a human being is involved. <laughs> no spirit can have access until a human being has been involved. Satan could not have crucified Jesus until he entered Judas. Some human being must be involved. Am I talking to somebody here? Is it a good teaching? Look, I said, do you have the character for it? I see that you are marrying a great man. I receive it. Go and wait upon the Lord by serving people who are great so that you know how to serve great people. That is waiting upon the Lord. Let me tell you this. And this thing is very true. I've seen you so fashion designers. Hairdressers, take your seat. It's those, especially those who do more fun in San Ujuma, handiworks. San Ujuma is San Ujuma. It's a broken cry. You know that when you do your work, people don't like it. You know why? Most often, when you finish a trade, you learn, you must go and do what we call attachment. And attachment is what gives you the character on what you have learned at work. At that place, you think you know, or your boss said, No! Cut it this way. No, put it this way. I know I went to school. Yes, you went to school, but you don't have the character. It's the character that is developed in you that makes the promises come fast. If the promises are delayed, it's not God who has delayed. You have not built in you the character. The hair, as long as Galatians is for, as long as the hair is behaving like a child, is behaving like a servant, you can never have what is yours until you start behaving like what you must behave like. Galatians 4, are we there? Read. Now I say, the hair, my dear one, no. as long as it's a child, different nothing from a child, though it's Lord of all. So, God has given you everything, oh Joseph. God has given you everything, oh David. It is yours. But guess what? In between the promise and the fulfillment is a character. Am I talking to somebody here at all? So, what is a child? Who is a child? Say, me, I'm not a child. Hey, me, I'm 40 years. You are still a child. How do I know? First Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 12. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I understood like a child. Give me that scripture. Now, when I became a man, I put away childish things. And I said that the difference between a child and an adult is that a child talks before he thinks. A child talks before he thinks. 
a matured person. Let's read it. Go. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood like a child and taught as a child. So when you are matured, you think first. Then you understand it. Then you speak. When you are a child, you speak before you understand, before you think. Because when you speak, then they tell you, you are wrong. They go and say, ah, okay. Then you are now thinking about it. So look at someone and say, are you a child? Or you are an adult? Hey, Quincy, are you a child or you are an adult? What did the person say? Anybody who says something and changes his mouth is a child. Is a child. I told you I'll marry you, but I change my mind. It's a child. Why? I didn't know this is how you behave. If not, I'll not propose. You are, you are a big child. Because before you say I will marry you, you would have thought about it and understood that this person on what yet. On the media, on on penny pack. Then you still say, "I want to marry you." So when the person is doing it, it doesn't shock you because before he, be, she, or he behaved, you have already thought and understood before you spoke. <laughs> Whenever you hear somebody say, that, "If I knew this was your character, I would not have married you." Please don't mind the person. It's a child who is talking. When he, the person understands, the person will change. When it's a child, they don't understand. Everybody team bia no aka. Home home neje te no aka. Home home neje te no aka. Home home neje te no aka. I feel my spirit. You are the one. I feel in my spirit that you should come and work for me. The Lord is telling me that you can be a good pastor. No. Before the Lord, the Lord has told you. But before you will go and bring the person to you, you must study the person. You must watch the person. You must understand the person. Yes, God has spoken because the spiritual realm and the physical realm are not the same. That's why Jesus says, when you pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because what is on earth is not the same as in heaven. God has spoken that he will be great. But on earth, he doesn't have the character. I think you are not understanding me. Amen. Oh, amen. amen. Take your seat, please. So look at somebody and say, are you waiting upon the Lord or you are waiting for God? Now, if you are waiting for God, nobody should order you. If you are waiting for God, nobody can instruct you. If you are waiting for God, if you are waiting upon the Lord, then based on the assignment he has given you, go and serve somebody. I tell people this thing, and they don't get it. A man of God, praise the Lord. Um, I'm, I'm, let me use you. I'm pastor in charge of prayer, but I'm going to do 40 days fasting. I'll come back. You are crazy. You are going to do what? 40 days fasting. Whatever you are going to do 40 days to hear, your pastor should tell you. No, I'm not lying to you. If you are very, very attentive, by the time you come back, you realize everything that you went to hear is just a repetition. When I was what I want. You, you didn't hear me. Should I give you should I give you a particular example? Take your seat. Number one, when God wanted David to become king, who did they, God go and put him under the ground and say? In the same palace that he will be a king over. When God wanted Joseph to rule Egypt, where did he take him? The same house that belongs to Pharaoh by under Potiphar. The minister of chief of staff, chief tenancy or whatever, is a link. Everything that they developed, the seed for greatness was already in Joseph. The seed for greatness was already in David. David, you were anointed to be king at 13 years. 
You can kill Goliath at 17, but still you are not yet a king. Humble yourself. The fact that you can cast out demons doesn't mean you are a boss. Wait a minute. The fact that you can cast out a demon that your boss can get out doesn't mean you are greater. You know something? There's something we call the old prophet. I'm saying the old prophet. Am I teaching? There was a young prophet who God gave him a word to go and tell the king. He went to the king and said, That's yes, the Lord. Blah, blah, blah. The king was going to misbehave. He said for his son. His son became leprous. They said, Kai, this guy is powerful. Then the, the young guy said, Now that you are humble, your hands are healed. He became healed. Then they went to tell this old prophet that, Hey, young prophet, be a waba. That prophet, when he say miracle, when he say miracle, then the old prophet said, Where is he? I'll show him. That if God has left us, we still have God. So he went to meet the young prophet and told the young prophet that, ah, what did God tell you apart from the instructions he gave you? He said, God told me that I should never go left or right after the prophet. I should go straight to my house. And he said, that is why God brought me. An angel told me, listen, no, an angel told me, an angel told me to come and invite you to my house to come and eat. God told you, who is an angel, to tell you something. When your senior pastor tells you something, you go and ask somebody else, what do you think? You will hear something else. You want inquiries? Is it about to test the spirit? Yes, if you, if, if you are in church and you are under leadership and you are testing the ministry, then don't stay in the ministry. You are testing. Testing mic one, two. We don't sing two testing mic. We test. If it doesn't function, we change. The day I don't see in choir practice, you are in trouble. You don't hear me. Take your seat. Where was I? If you are David or you are Joseph, God has poured oil on you. You will be great. You will be this. Now, my first time I'm asking you, who are you serving? Who are you under? Who is tutelaging you? Tut directing your affairs. Read your Bible well. Because I'll, 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 I'll deal with it maybe. But one of the ways to get into your timing with God, if you are late, is to find out what God wants to do and do it. I sought for a man standing in the gap. I did not get some. What does God want to do? So this lady goes to God. Hannah goes to God. He's been asking for baby all her life. Offering will not give it. Tithe will not give it. First fruit will not give it. Then he said, God, I realize that Ellie is not serious with church. His children are also not serious. So God, the vacancy in your life. If you give me a child, I'll give the child to you. He connected him. So all of a sudden, it became his time. Am I with you? By first Samuel chapter 3, Samuel has been dedicated from the mother's womb to be a priest. In the house of God. How many of you know that already? God gave the child before. But El, Samuel was serving early. And the Bible said, Samuel was asleep. But his ears were attentive to hear if Eli will call. Some of you are serving. But when you sleep, you are slept. He was sleeping. But his yes was still open to who God said he should serve. Let me tell you this. You know how to sow, right? But you never sow for great people, that. You know why? Because great people, they have eyes for details. I was telling one of my daughters who know how to sew. She sew a nice dress. But the ironing inside was not done well. So when the person wore the dress, he, he has received extra size. No knitting. So the person needed it hurriedly. It is your product. It represents you. If the person is in a hurry, at the end of the day, that is you. That is not the person. 
if anybody asks them, your name is going to be mentioned. And you see, most often, if you stay with your boss and your leader, and you say, Nikofi, my pam, I didn't even finish so I'm going home. He tell you, have you, are you on this? When I come, he say, no, the customer needs it now. Do it. You'll be angry, but you do it. Why? Because the customer needs it. You know what? That is what separates, forgive me, the white man who shows and the black man who shows. It is called finishing. Again, what is finishing? So many people know how to start but can't finish. Why? Because they never said. You see, when you are serving people, please, am I teaching you? One of the things you never like about them is that you know what they know, but you are not where they are. Never forget that. You know what they know, but you are not where they are. And where they are is something they know that you don't know. And you can know what a person knows by the instruction the person gives. Guess what? Let's not forget my story. The young prophet followed the prophet who said, an angel said, to his house. And before you even arrive, Dogs ate the guy. Lions chewed the prophet up. Then the old prophet said, I told you. Listen, never joke with an experienced person. Look at someone and say, who are you serving? What did the person say? God has called me. But is your ear attentive? Next instruction. Ah, Samuel! Samuel! Ellie didn't say, ah, I could cry with pad. When you are just about to sleep, then he'll call you. You, you can't sleep, then the young people sleep. Ah, I'm going to He quickly got up, went to the priest, and he said, You called me. The real call is coming. The one you receive in a spiritual realm, in your mother's womb, is spiritual. You can't live spiritually on this earth. You must be physical. That is why if you want to live on this earth and you don't eat, you will die. You will die. When Jesus was on earth, he ate. If God comes, he will eat. In heaven, they don't eat. But here, you must eat. This body needs food. What I'm simply saying is that when you run home, you are sunny from. Many have been in the spirit that they can't marry. As soon as you see somebody, what are you know? Kai, the Lord showed me there's a witch in your house. Who doesn't have a witch in their family? Even you talking, there are two following you. The whole world, there is, there is no country which have more demons and gods like India, and yet they are rich. So look, stop that nonsense. I think I'm not teaching well. The Bible said, deep collect unto deep. Say it after me. What did I say? If you are deep, connect to deep. Joseph's boss accused him of rape. It was in the front line. I was there. Daily Guide and Chronicle carried it. Joseph rapes Madame. And I can see, see Pratt discussing it on Peace FM. And whilst he was busy, God, take me out. God, take me out. God said, prison straight. 
Which kind of God is this that the more you pray, the more he gives you wahala? He's not giving you wahala. He's taking you to your destination. It is the road. 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 Deliverance doesn't mean you get out. Deliverance is movement forward. Deliverance is you are no more than what you used to be. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, God. Am I talking to somebody here? Look at some. Are you delivered? What did the person say? If you look at your life last year and this year, it is better. I can tell you, you have been delivered. But the problem is that you've entered into another place that you need another deliverance. <laughs> you need another. You need another. You look back. Yes, you are moving forward. Let's go to Joel chapter 2. When God wants to deliver you, taking you to your next level, whether you are waiting upon him, waiting, there's something that happens. How many of you have heard people pray this prayer before? Oh God, those with the caterpillar worm have eaten. I command the caterpillar and die. Caterpillar worm, palm worm, a caterpillar worm, a caterpillar worm, all the worms. Read your Bible. Those worms, they don't die. Those worms are sent by God. Those caterpillar worms, they are palmer worms, and then then the worms, they are canker worms, they are canker worms. Ah, we've prayed that prayer before. Oh God, say oh God, oh God, all the caterpillar worms, all the caterpillar, all the palmer, all the palmer worms that are destroying me, all that are destroying me, die by fire, die by fire. You are you fight, are you God's enemy now? Give me from twenty eight, please. No, from 25. God said, I will what? Restore to you what? The, the, the. Hold on to yes. Say yes. yes. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me use Kuma as an example. Kuma was in here. He sent some boys to come and work. When they came, iron rust, long white. They spot it. Wait a minute. He will never do that. He knows the job. If not for him, the boys should pay for it or they go to jail. You know what? If I've taken them to jail, they would either come and pay or go to jail. But because of his experience, he would never do that. You know what? He has saved himself from jail. And most people are in jail. And jail keeps you away from time. Take your seat. Jail keeps people away from time. When Joseph was in prison, a sign that he was in prison was the dress. Listen to me. The dress, the beard, and the hair. Please, are you understanding me? Because in prison, you can't have time to shave, barb your hair. Now, what chrome grow in your head? Now, hear me. And in prison, a boy who was like 17 years. You know, a 17-year-old boy and a 30-year-old boy, their body is not the same. At this rate, every dress he had will not fit. But you see, when the Bible said the king called him to come, please, are you listening to me? The first thing that happened to him, he shaved his beard, wore a cloth. Now, he didn't wear 20-year-old um, cloth, 23-year-old cloth, 14-year-old cloth. No, all those clothes he bypassed it. They sold a cloth for him that fitted him as, as a 30 year old person. That means that the cloth symbolized all the years that he has failed to wear a cloth. And one cloth he wore, one cloth he changed for the 13 years of his life in prison. One cloth he changed, changed his life forever. You, you change hairstyle 20. Every designer cloth you wear some. But you are still where you are. Oh, is it true? It's not true. One cloth the guy changed. He was a prime minister. Now, what made Joseph? I've taught this before, but let me say it again for sake of clarity. Know that you can't go to Potiphar, Pharaoh's house 
with a beard and a hair. He had served Potiphar before. And Potiphar had the same character like Pharaoh. And knew that if Pharaoh, Potiphar doesn't like it, his boss will not like it. So he could have entered the palace and the king would say, abomination. <laughs> or back to jail. But he knew by service that if my boss does not like this, then the king will not also like it. Shave this beard. Shave this hair. Change his cloth. You know what? He saved him in and out. Go and come. Go and come. If the king still wanted him to hear the prophecy, he would still have asked him, go and shave your hair. Change your dress and come. He will go. Maybe I don't like. Go and change and come. Some of you, the reason why you are wasting years, go and come, is affecting you. Is that your mentality is still the same. You didn't hear me. Go and come. No, go and come. You know what is going and come? How many of you know go and come? Do it this way. You go, you still do it the way you want it. You bring it. They examine it. I should use this one. Eh? They examine it. He said, no, I don't like this one. So you go, you come. You go, you come. You know what you are? You are wasting time. Let me tell you this. Satan doesn't attack your finances. He attacks your time. And when God comes into your life, what he does is that he moves you into your time. Let me give you an example. There are some jobs. You can never get it when you are 40 years. They say 28 years or less with working experience. Who's waiting 48? Because at this time, at 48... You should have your own business. You can't be under somebody's employment. So you have passed the time of being employed. And yet you are still not thinking as a manager. You are still thinking like a servant. So the problem with you is that you are out of time. Is someone understanding me? Oh, please, are you, are you here with me? How many of you understand me here? Who should I use as an example? Which profession? Who can help? <laughs> Taylor, fashion designer. I won't ask your age. But at a certain age, with 14 children, a wife, a big family, you might have to have some form of independence on your own. If you go to somebody and you even say, I'm looking for a job, and they ask you, how old are you? you mention your age. Are you married? Yes. With how many children? 40. They know that their salary will not be enough. You'll be a thief. They'll say, no vacancy. You are good, but no vacancy. Is it true or is it not true? As soon as you mention your 14 children, they know that 1,500 will not be enough for you. So straight away, they will tell you, we'll call you. They didn't call you, not because you are not good, but because you are out of time. Because in this time of your life, you should have been able to have your own company. And your 14 children should be doing knitting, needlework, buttons. Is it true or is it not true? Oh, is it true or is it not true? But because you did not build capacity at the, our character, it looks like in between the promise and the fulfillment, the fulfillment is not happening because you must change your status quo to fit into your new status. Am I talking to somebody here? Some of you, I'm not lying to you. There is no way you can be an associate pastor in Bridge. It will not be possible. The best we can do for you is to train you and give you a branch at Wale Wale. Go there. Because you are independent minded already. If we bring you here, you will die. The pressure here, you will collapse. You can't take my pressure. You, your blood pressure will high, go high. And we always have to pray for you. If you are not careful, you will die of pressure. So at this rate, let me leave it here. He said, I will restore to you what will God restore to you? Not the money.
the years that the what the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Who sent them? Whose army is it? Why are you binding it? Eradia, Eradia, oh, how be I? How be I? I want to say, I want to say, Are you echo? Okay, or how no call? As it was in the beginning, it's not and ever shall be. You are still suffering because it was the how which was to bring you promotion. But you say you don't like it. So the how is gone and your life is the way it is. People who are rich are people who solve problems. Ask anybody who is rich. You are only rich because you solve a problem. When you don't solve a problem and you are enjoying life, you are a thief. The dress I am wearing, somebody solved my problem of nakedness. And I gave the person what? Money. For dress. No. For time spent on my dress. So you are paid not for work. You are paid for time. So that concern you've been doing from morning to evening, who pays you? I was just passing and I decided to come and visit you. Hey, <laughs> Pastor Daniel, you talk about only in Swobi, and I want to cook, and I saw Bolo, and I about five me coffee. Wonderful. At the end of the month, where do you take your salary? You know why I give people allowance? I give people allowance because I take their time. Do this for me. It's not what you do, it's the time. It's only in Africa that we are poor, that we pay people long work. Outside, you are paid by time work. One hour, they pay you. They pay you with time. Time determines what you are paid. If you spend five hours, you are paid five hours. You spend two hours. And the truth is that your own vision. How many hours do you spend your vision that you want God to pay you? I know you won't clap. Or oh, you want me to end? Whilst Chinese children are doing phones, what are our children doing? Drinking milk. When God wants to bless, you know what he gives you? He gives you time. May God give you time. Amen. I say may God give you time. Amen. I see you can't say amen. Let God give you money. I receive it. For you to have the money, you must put in time. If you don't put in time, you don't get the money. It is the time that is going to give you money. So when Satan wants to disturb you, wait a minute. You have to be at this place at six. Satan will steal the time. You get there at 10. Why is the white man more successful than the black man? I will explain. Anything that takes the white man's time, he fights it. If he wears the pounding fufu will give a problem, he will get a grinder. Because pounding fufu is a waste of time. 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 But he gets a grinder, puts his on, goes to poo poo. By the time he comes from the poo poo, fufu is ready. Anything that will take the man's time, he fights it. But we, we love to waste time. Hey, me will watch you. Hey, whoa, put my miss away. Hey, no, papa. Hey, now I want to back on all. We're from America, but hey, let's see what you mean. Home, that's what you And if you make a mistake and tell them, please, I'm in a hurry, can I go? 
kwala mapa mumbuatia kwa 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 if satan wants to destroy you he fights your time so that's why when you die it is over because you don't have time again as long as you are not dead you have time and this year god will give you time i said god will do what God will give you what? I mean, God will give you what? God will give you what? God will give you what? How does God give you time? It's simple. That is when, let me use Kaya as an example. Kaya sings. That is when a, an international musician will come and say, how are you? You say, I'm fine. Ah, can you back me? So I will back you. You finish backing and the person says, ah, you back me. Don't you have an album? Oh, I have it. Can we, oh, sing it at my concert. You know, normally, it would have taken you years, days, months to build that capacity. But whilst she was waiting on God, she had an album nobody would listen to. But when God opened the door, she now brought her eternity mindset into time, produced it, and it's now a hit. Now, I tell you, you can sing very well. What album do you have? Hmm. I have some plan what can know. What works as your husband? My husband is a sound engineer. Hey, so all along that you are with your husband in the room, sound engineer, what have you two been doing? Making babies. So couldn't you be in the bedroom? You do and your husband and your husband will record we didn't have we didn't have to go to the you did not have what you did not have what you did not have what but the truth is that did you have time what did you use the time for making babies <laughs> Do you know January is gone? No? I said, how many is gone? February is go. I feel there, I am a few. I am a few. Tobo. Take your seat. Tobo, 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 Tobo. Tobo. One month, 31 good days is gone. What did you get at the end of 31 days? So when God wants to take you to your next level, that is when you meet somebody that you are a problem solver. Years of famine, years of captivity, Joseph said, I know what you need. We have to save food for seven years. After seven years, there will be hunger and they will feed everybody. His knowledge connected with a problem. And for the next 14 years, Joseph began to take control of the whole nation. What will you do if God gives you an opportunity? Come and sing. I mean, I like national theater. I don't like places like this. So, me, I'll just do anything. I'm with you in front. In front of my memory. We have recorded you. It's on YouTube. Prompt. Not front. Prompt. We have recorded you. It's on YouTube. Your destiny helper is watching. God tells him. As he's going school and God makes the YouTube pop up, pa, then your face comes and who is this? And something tells him he has met you somewhere before. Something is clicking something. God is moving you into your time. The person watches you. I put you in prompt. 
prompt of my melody, nobody matters. Mistake. Next person. You missed your time because you were not waiting upon the Lord. Listen, if you get certain places to go to, an office to work, I can tell my, my staff, there is no better office to work in the world like my office. Yeah, let me tell you this. It is a complete overhauling lifestyle. Complete overhaul. From head to toe, it's a complete overhaul. And by the time you step out, you realize that you've gone to a school that you didn't pay money for. Look at someone seated around you and ask the person that, do you want restoration? How many say, what did the person say? Look at what, what restoration do you need? Okay, let me end on this. This is the restoration God wants to give you. Give me verse 26. God wants to give you a restoration on your time. Some say time. So now, any time you have available, go and undo what you did wrong. Because that time must speak for you. Did you hear me? And he shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that have dealt wonders with you and the people shall never be ashamed. 27, quickly. And he shall know that I am there in the midst of Israel. 28. And as I come to pass afterward, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Let me tell you, if the Holy Ghost will come upon you completely, God must restore you time. Why? Before the Holy Spirit will come upon the disciples, they had to build character with Jesus. True of us. No, they didn't just come. Jesus not said, no. They stayed with Jesus three and a half solid years. For Jesus to build with them character. Was able to tell Peter, this thing is the devil speaking through you. This attitude is not good. Change from this, move from here, pass here, do that. Now go and buy me food. Peter was older than Jesus. Peter says, go and buy me food. Go and prepare this place for me. After he has done that, then Jesus said, now I go. Now I take the spirit. Now before the spirit for success, excellence will come upon you. You must begin to look into your life. What opportunities did God give you? And how did you mess that opportunity up? If we're given that opportunity now, how will you remedy it? I've missed so many opportunities in life. I can give you some of them. The man of God who ordained me, the lady bishop of Hossi, used to meet me in traffic. And this is a man I sent my first book to that I should forward. He didn't forward it. The next time I realized he was preaching the book. So I got very offended. And I met this man in traffic several times. He would roll his glass and say, hello, come and see me in the office. I didn't go. Because you know what? I felt like me too. I'm preaching on radio. People know me. And interest, I kept meeting this man. He said, come and meet me in the office. I didn't go. The man died. And guess what? He was preaching on the pulpit. He said, praise the Lord. And he died. And when he died, I saw one of my friends. Every month, he goes to do a program for them. Every month, he's preaching for the church. Every month, he's preaching for the church. So one day, I asked God, so me, they won't call me. These people mean they ordain me there. Their church, we are friends. So, and the Lord said, When the man called you, did you attend? I said, Now, Lord, let him call me. He's dead. I 
I've tell you things. I've missed great opportunities because I used to be very funny. I had judges come into church, and I'm like, hey, everybody sit anywhere. Come on, you are judge, so what? Everybody, hey, come on, come on, come on. Everybody sit anywhere. We are all human beings. I do I forgot that we are all human beings, but we all know the same grace. And they'll say, man of God, I can't come to church. Can you come to my house? No, I can't come to your house. You must come to church. Today, if I have the opportunity, my attitude will change. When the judges come, I'll give them front row seats. If they say they need me in their house, I will go. Because Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house. Jesus went to Lazarus' house. There are things certain doors that God gave me that my foolishness as a child closed that it has taken me years to learn and I'm teaching you but me too I know what I'm saying to you is foolishness because you are a child when you grow you will preach my message Is somebody hearing me? Is somebody hearing me? Some of these people, they could have changed my life for good. They could have changed me. We got tongues and we got tongues. Who was come? Who was come? Drive four by four. Drive four by four. We cry me a congregation channel. You can have more than a pastor, but a door that a pastor will open for you. The day Bishop Takawa stepped foot in this auditorium, it was a surprise to me. He came. When I came, he was barefooted, stepping on the ground. He said, I came to bless the land. I said, Kai, I've learned my lesson, you know. As soon as he started praying, I knelt down. I said, Jai, because if you are taller than your blesser, your blessing is reduced. <laughs> yeah. If you are taller than your blesser, let me give you an example. Oh, no, 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 please. You see, how much can I give? Go down a bit for me. You see, it means that if I do this now, it takes me to also humble myself, to also be the blessing. And people give their best when both are humble. The man of God is barefooted. His slippers was here. His foot is on the floor. I went down. When I got up, my black trousers was all white. Cement. I didn't look there. I told you, man of God, this year, my biggest prayer was, so no man of God, Father, will lay hands on me. Me, I've been laying hands on my people. Who will lay hands on me? He said, I mean, I don't know. I was there. The Lord said, I shall come. I said, I, when you go, I said, I want you to come. He said, no, I'll surprise you. But a man of God will move from his church and come here. Those days, I'll take for granted. <laughs> it cost me to have built a big church building. Now they envy me. They want me to be their friend. So they are coming here. Uh -huh. So what can I do for you, Bishop? Many have missed their doors. They have closed it. Because the day that Bishop became my friend, I saw an opportunity. God is saying, the way you more treated the other bishop. Let me see how you treat this one. Let me see how you will treat this one. And anybody who came into your life that you mess the person up, I ask God to give you another opportunity. Your amen is not good at all. I say may God give you another opportunity. May God give you another opportunity. And this time, use your time wisely. I used to be with some of these men of God, and especially when I got to know, I'm confessing my sins. That they preach my book. When I meet them, I won't keep quiet. I was sitting at a table. This is Bishop Bob Hossin. This is um, um, a friend saying, uh, Pastor Mensah Otabo. This is um, Reverend Kisidotete. I mean, name them. We we're all on the table. We're eating. Then, small boy. They said, so what is the Lord saying? Then me, I say, actually, the move of God is, and I'll talk. They won't keep quiet. They will not say anything. The next time, 
how much you need. One of the pastors lifted that is split when he sit at the corner. How much you need to do? I said, God, so when will I see it with great men again? Because the Bible says, when you see it with great people, cut your throat if you have appetite. Keep what you know to yourself. Let them give you what they know because there's something they know that will take you to where they are. them. When we're going to do Bishop Bento's funeral, they said, man of God, you are taking the funeral. I said, Bishop, how can I take funeral? It's my friend, my best friend. How can I take funeral when my fathers are there? Please, do whatever you want to do. So, but you say something, I said, please, oh, I came for your blessing. When we were doing the Thanksgiving, I was there and I heard, you are taking it. I said, who? Why am I taking it? He said, you shall take it. they said, if they call you, you will give it to them. So they've asked us to call you. So you are doing it. I said, okay, that is all that I went to do it. Bishop Tagaba called me and said, you did very well. I've been listening to you. I said, God, thank you all. Because I've messed up certain opportunities. And let me tell you, every man of God carries a grace that another man of God does not have. <laughs> like you know how to sew. Maybe you know how to sew men's dress. You meet somebody who is telling you, eh, if you sew, do this way. But you sew for women, you don't know. A big woman is coming for you to sew. A big woman is coming for you to sew. And you cannot tell that big woman you don't sew for women. So that day, God brought you to a woman who knows how to sew and was teaching you, say, me, I don't sew woman dress, so I don't listen to woman. We want all the people who sew, this way, if you sew, Thousand five. After that, the connection is every month. Thousand five times five. All the colleagues, and your poverty has changed. But because you did not listen to this one, that is why you are where you are. May God give you another opportunity. Am I? I think I'm not teaching well. Any of your time and opportunity you you have missed, may God give you that opportunity again. May God give you that opportunity again. And this time, maximize it. Let me end. Take your seat, please. Peter, Luke chapter 5, goes fishing. Fishing throughout the night. Some say time. I didn't say time. Fishing throughout the night. That's he toiled all night. Master, it's not easy to work all night and still catch nothing. Even in the midst of it, Peter will not sleep. What was Peter doing? Mending his net. Mending his net. Tying the net. He saw that there's a hole in my life. There's an access that the enemy has in my life. Doors get closed in my life. Peter was closing up. Closing the places that has always given him problems. Then Jesus came and said, give me your boat. He gave the boat. When Jesus finished using the boat, he said, cast your net to the deep for a catch. He nearly missed his time. He said, ah! Let's read this. Launch your net into the deep, down and net for a drop. Look at the answer he gave. And someone answered and said, Master, who will be master soon to you too? We have told all night. Trying to talk about my wasting my time, my save my time, my save me pray. But I said, but nevertheless, at your word, the word of God moves you into your time. Nevertheless, at your word, nevertheless, I have wasted all the night, but the next five minutes, if you say I should cast this net, if God comes to you and says, do it again, have you repaired the damage? Yes, your heart was broken, but it's a heart healed to marry again. Yes, your heart was disappointed, but has it been put together to go on again? He said, nevertheless, at your word, I'm going to do it. And he did it and he caught a lot of fishes. And the fishes brought many partners. Why you are not having partners? Why you are not catching fishes? Is because you are still not mending the net. You are spending time crying. I'm talking to you. Yeah, I'm prophesying to you. I need an usher. You are spending time crying. Grieving over the pain. Grieving over, ah, I should have done it this way years ago. I should have done it this way. Why didn't I do it this way? Why didn't I do it this way? Oh God, I should have done it. No. That is not what you are supposed to think about. 
What you are supposed to think about now is that, God, if this opportunity is given to me again, how would I handle it? How would I take it? And when God sees that you are mending that part of your life, God will come himself, come. Jesus himself appeared to this man and said, I want you to know, do it this time. And you will catch. And this time, Peter caught a lot of fishes. May you catch the fish you need to catch. May you catch the fish you need to catch. Are you with me? Can I give you another one? John chapter 5. A man had been the first one is Luke chapter 5. This is John chapter 5. A man had been at the pool of Bethsaida for how many years? 38 years. How many years? 38 years is a long time. Jesus asked him, what are you doing here? Are you a commentator? Your commentary is delaying time. Eh? And there's a case in my house. Nobody's helping me. I don't have a helper. You're not even speaking in tongues. You are just complaining everywhere. Shut up! Jesus said, pick your bed and go home. 38 years. One man steps into his life. His problem is solved the rest of his life. May God change your destiny within the next 24 hours to somebody the next 48 hours. May you encounter somebody who will transform your ministry, who will transform your life, who will transform your day, who will transform your life. If you are the one, shout an amen. learned my lessons. Take your seat. Somebody told me, a classmate of mine told me, Bishop, there's a man of God. He's always watching you on Facebook. That is Bishop Arthur Dixon. He's always watching you. He wants to meet you. He says you are powerful. He says you are this. I've learned my lesson. He was my senior in the Saturday college. The day I met him, he was saying, hey, you are powerful. You... I said, man of God. But we're also following your leader. Bishop Doug is very great. First one, he said, I'm man, I'm great. <laughs> so you two have been following me. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's good. You two have been following me. Yeah, I know I'm good. No, I said, yeah, I've also been following your bishop. Your bishop is so powerful. Your bishop is this. He said, wow. So follow us. Yes. I threw away what I knew. I printed, I didn't know what he was talking about. The next moment, he said, I'm having a party. Come. I was the only, me and my wife and Eresi were the only non lighthouse people that were at the party. And the guest was Lady Adelaide. When we're going, I said, Let me first come in my own. I go to party. I don't care. I sneak out. I was going. I told mommy, Be in the car. I'm coming. I'm going to greet at a table so that I can go. I go and greet. Then Mr. Patterson said, before then, I'm going to greet. Something happened. They say she must talk. She must cut cake. She must do this. Something said, go, 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 go. I was patient. They finished what she said. Mr. Patterson said, this is Reverend Yale. I said, ah, Yale Tewuzin, we've heard about you. I said, oh, ma. Uh, I said, ah. I said, so what can I do for you? Uh, then she says, I want fancy for so Bishop Atreus is also fancy. Bishop Tabatain is fancy. Now I laugh. I said, man, my greatest vision is that you come and preach for us. I said, you want me to preach? When? I said, when you are ready. He said, speak to my assistant. Guess who the assistant is? My mate at national service. You see, God moves you into time. I said, February. He said, February is so close. I just met you today. But I said, but because of you, my assistant who said you got her born again, because of Bishop Arthur Dixon who says he's your classmate and your senior in school, because of Bishop Dapatem who is your classmate in school, I'm coming in February, but I only spend one day. I said, ma, no problem. The most important thing that you come. No problem. Then I was humble. I went to Bishop Dapatem. Listen to me carefully. I'm teaching you wisdom. I said, Bishop Dapatem, you know this your first lady than me. So, but you are anointed. You'll be receiving guest people. I said, I don't know. Tell me, how can I treat her that she will always be around? 
Then they said, don't worry. My sister is her sister. They grew up from childhood. My wife is their sister. So humbly, I called her um, the wife. How? So this lady likes this. He likes this tea. He likes this food. He likes this talk. He likes that. I said, no problem. She came. One day became one week. Please, it was in prayer. I have a secretary. She's called Rukaya. She can talk. They the athlete likes conversation. So when I leave the office, I tell Kaya, don't go anywhere. Stay there. Talk. She likes conversation. You want to attract certain people to you. You don't want to learn what they want. You want them to learn what you want. She went home. Discussed bridge ministry with her husband. Do you know how many years it will take you for Bishop Dad to know you? This man has over 3,000 pastors, over 4,000 churches. How can he know somebody outside? And every night when the wife gets home, the wife gets home after 12 midnight, they have to talk. Where did you go? No more reverend, bridge for no way, come on, bridge for wood, treat him, miss one kelly willy now. One tea now. Let me tell you this. I'll continue on this message on Wednesday. Be on your feet. <laughs> Am I teaching you something here? How to move into your time. Master, put your time away and enter some of this time. That's all. Nim enjoy with him. I was talking to a footballer. I said, Do you want to play football? But seeing that, he's still not playing even local team. I said, most big footballers like Michael Asian, Asamwajan, they will go to professional footballers' house and they don't go and play football. They go and wash. They go and carry their balls. They were ball boys. Out of their ball boys, then they give the opportunity. And man of God, pray for me so that they will see that me too, I'm skillful. People don't give you promotion because you are skillful. They give you promotion because you are connected. I told the boy, listen, go to some of these people's house. I even gave one of them to Pastor Victor, who was managing sound for Samwajan. Go follow Pastor Victor, carry his speakers when he's going to do sound for Samwajan. So that when you get to Samwajan, say, take Atlas, start with him. When he comes, say, who were they? Say, it's me. Say, ah, oh, I just want to help you. Say, so what do you do? I'm not learning to play football. Say, so, I do play football. Play, let me see. Then you have opportunity. Now, me, I'm a good footballer. And when we are playing football here, he will score all the goals. But his goal is still in his leg. The goal is still in the leg. But the very we know. And you think that God has disappointed him. No, God has not done it. Because let me tell you this. Your for honor is humility. Before honor is what? Humility. Humility will take you to places nobody can take you. Lift up your voice and begin to talk to God. God, I want to take my time seriously. Get to the stage for me. The word is a seed. When you meet people and they're talking about money, pretend you are poor and listen to them. Yeah, they are unbelievers, but keep quiet and listen to them. That is an opportunity.
can be 